Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. And in this video I'm going to talk about nickel plating. This is something really that I've never done, so this is a bit of an experiment for me, and uh, probably new to most of you as well. But a man by the name of Kevin, who wishes to remain anonymous, and he's from one of the northern coal states, sent me this out of the clear blue sky, but he has given me other things. For instance, you may remember several months ago, or perhaps last year, where he sent me this uh, foam, aluminum foam, that is used for insulation, sound insulation. It has many other uses too. But the interesting thing about this is that it floats, aluminum that floats. But anyway, thank you Kevin. And uh, Kevin sent this directly, and I believe it was drop shipped, and it is a a kit probably sold to schools by Caswell Industries, and it is a a science uh, plating kit for nickel plating. And uh, there's the directions, they're, although they're rather brief directions. There's only two sheets. And then I have to laugh, you know, this just aggravates me no end, but here we have eight sheets of MSD sheets which really have nothing to do with instruction. They're just warnings or telling you what the chemicals consist of. So, yeah, again, to me that's all foolishness, but most of you disagree with me on that, so I won't belabor the issue. But let me show you what came with this kit. In this box came two bottles of the, what do they call it here, plug and plate nickel solution. Now I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, years ago I know that, well I've been in many plating plants, let me talk about that in a minute. A beaker to do the actual plating in it, a wire with alligator clips, and here are the actual nickel anodes. Remember nickel is a uh, uh, element an element and a wall wart and this is the uh, power supply and it's four and a half volts so that's just something like you'd use for a, a recharger so anyway this is all in a package so that virtually everything that is needed uh, is, is here because this is probably used in schools maybe even by science teachers that do not have a lot of other equipment there in the shop. Now I've been in, like I say, many plating plants. My brother and my best friend worked in a plating plant where they made dinette sets back in the 60's for Sears. Chrome plated tubular legs if you can visualize that. But I had been in the plant many times and what I remember more than anything is the strong smell and the corrosiveness of the acid because they were dipping the uh, parts in acid and then they got washed. There was all different processes uh, in the conveyor lines that, that dipped and then moved to the next tank and dipped. I remember all that vaguely but the corrosion in there, there was no piece of steel that wasn't rusty and corroded and uh, my friend that I travel with uh, worked there so we would go in there on a Friday night and anything we wanted to get plated you could have plated so among all the tubular legs that were being dipped you'd see hubcaps and manifolds just about any kind of car parts you could imagine because back then there was no security anything went and my friend did tell me that a large quantity of nickel anodes bars were stolen. However, they almost immediately caught the guy. All they had to do go, was to go up to Ramanowski Junkyard, which was a couple blocks away, and uh, there they were, and they knew who had stolen them. So the guy was busted. Well, that's a little bit of a sidetrack here again, so let's get on with it. I always like the appearance of nickel plating far better than chrome plating, but taking one of the anodes I'm going to clip it right onto the side like that. They give slightly different instructions for that. And then the other one, and I already curved these to the approximate radius of this beaker. They were perfectly flat and it's a relatively soft metal. Softer than what I thought it would be. I'm going to perform an experiment here for my first job 
And if it is successful, I think I'll plate this little uh, bell center punch that I made some time ago. But this is a piece of copper, and I've already brightened it up. This is a piece of cold rolled steel, so those will be in the same job here. Now I've cleaned these thoroughly with sandpaper. Now that isn't clean enough. I have to clean them also chemically, so we'll get back to that in a second. But watch what I do here with the beaker. I took one of the uh, anodes and they suggested to cut a slit like this and hang that over the edge. Well, I don't like the way that moves out toward the center because it's going to interfere with the workpiece. So I'm using these clips which were not supplied. Pay no attention to the color. Just got those out of my junk box. And then this uh, little piece that I bent out can be connected with the black lead from one side to the other, like that. It is not my purpose during this video to explain to you what's really happening here, other than very briefly I'm telling you that I am transferring some of the nickel off of these anodes on to the workpiece as they pass through the electrolyte and, uh, and get deposited. Read up on that or watch another video if you want to learn about that. But I'm taking the stick that they provided and that's non-conductive and that's why uh, I'm using it. And I will hang the pieces and I remember being in the plating plant how they hung uh, everything from a rack. Often many many pieces on one rack. My brother worked for John W. Hobbs too where they used to make a lot of car parts he was on the racking line. He said he absolutely hated it because you, because you couldn't work fast enough. Now what I'm going to do here is take the black lead and that will be connected to this piece of wire that's been cleaned up. And it's going to pass through like that. And i got to make sure I don't cross any of my pieces and that'll be the negative onto that copper wire. Not enough weight here, you know, everything's kind of swinging around. I don't like that. And then the red will be fastened. Look at that, how everything moves over here. Now I'm going to set that up a little better than that. I don't like that at all. But these two pieces need to be in the circuit on that copper. That's not a very positive uh, connection at all. It's just sitting there by gravity. I really I don't like that. But we'll see if it works. Now I have to stop and clean the pieces. Now here's how I'm going to clean these. First of all they need to be cleaned uh, mechanically like I said. So they've been cleaned with abrasives. Secondly, I'm going to use brake cleaner or some type of thinner. Now they suggested that do not use any petroleum based thinner. I just put some of that on there because, uh, well, just don't, don't use it. So I'm going to use this first. Clean it up real well. I don't know what that red stuff is on my fingers. Now I don't care two hoots about it up here because that's where I'm hanging it but you should never contaminate it now by touching it like I just did there. It has to be wiped. Now that is not good enough. That takes the oil off. Can you see the there's a little bit of black on there too. If there's any oil on there. And then finally they said it clean it thoroughly in detergent. And uh, that's about half of what they were doing in the plating plant was cleaning. They suggest it's simple green, which I guess is just a strong detergent. So I'm going to clean it thoroughly with this and then dry it. And I'm going to go over to the sink and do this off camera because I want to use hot water and then it very quickly will, uh, will dry once the pieces are, are uh, heated by the hot water. So then I'll, I'll come back here in a minute and I'll, I'll hang them up on the rack. Okay, one minute has passed. These are clean, it's still drying. Do not touch. You can use gloves 
and you probably should use gloves when you handle these chemicals but this is my year of living dangerously well what I don't like here is just everything is so lightweight it's wobbly and, and so I'm gonna look what I did here I clamped that piece of copper onto this stick which must weigh one gram that's therein lies its fault I should have used a, a decent piece sometimes in a kit they give you a junk and that's junk alright there's the negative lead it's not hooked up yet the wall wart is not plugged in now I will hang the copper that gives it a little more firmness and the cold roll steel you know what that's still got some water on it I gotta dry that now let's re review what I have done here we've got the nickel anodes on each side of the work they are connected by the black jumper cable they are the positive so the positive is connected to one of those leads and of course electrically it'll be transferred over to this side as well now the two work pieces that I'm plating are laying on a copper wire and that extends over and it, that's the uh, cathode these pieces are the cathode and the negative lead from the wall wart is touching it now all I need to do is to add the electrolyte the plug and plate nickel solution whatever that is and I don't know it probably is going to take both bottles I don't know and I, I'll bring it up to about this level right about here then uh, I'll plug it in there should be bubbles almost immediately I would suggest not getting this on your skin I don't know what it is but as we know it's a pretty color very pretty color and I assume it can be used over and over and I will need the other bottle I think there's a pint in each bottle okay you can see how high that has come up I use just about both bottles full or empty now I'm gonna plug it in and let's watch for bubbles so I'm plugging it in right now four and a half volts nothing happening yet and I'm making note of the time now what it said is that even if your work is dirty it's probably going to plate but the problem is there will be delamination that is the plating will peel off and you've all seen defective products where plating did peel off and that probably was due then to uh, poor cleaning All right, only eight or ten minutes has elapsed. Oh, one thing I, I don't think I mentioned is that as far as polishing and cleaning, plating will hide nothing. It's like when you spray paint. If you think you're going to cover any scratches or defects with plating or paint, you are wrong. Okay, we already have a deposit. There really aren't any bubbles like I expected but can you see the nickel plating that is absolutely awesome I know it's hard to to see that on the videotape now remember also that the anodes are being consumed and eventually would be gone now it says in the directions that the metal is being deposited onto the work, the cathode, at a rate of 
one one thousandth of an inch per hour. That's with that voltage. Now let's look at the piece of steel and that's not going to show up as well because it's already silver. But you can see the line there. See the vice marks on there? Of course that's not covering up any vice marks or other scratches. As a matter of fact the scratches when I use the abrasive cloth are more apparent than ever. Now I'm going to let this in there for one hour and then we're going to examine it. It's already been let's say 10 minutes. And if that's successful and we already know it will be, I'm going to take that out and do the uh, bell center punch. Now to me, I'm curious, will the plating be deposited on the inside if I hang it like this? And I put that screw in there as a, as a way to hang it. Alright, I'll see you in 50-5-0 minutes. But this is an awesome experience, something totally new for me. I didn't know you could do this at home, this simply. And this kit and the packing list was still in there because it was drop ship is about fifty or sixty dollars and they have a website great science experiment for you youngsters can be done at home or at school it's only been about fifteen minutes but i interrupt this to show you that i have connected my uh, wonderful simpson multimeter into the circuit to show you the voltage and why it's fluctuating like that I do not know but we are between uh, 2 and 4 volts so you can see that it's dropping to almost 2 volts and then up to about 2.5 volts back and forth I, I don't know why it's doing that this is my uh, Simpson meter given to me I think by uh, by Ed Young I believe it was thank you Ed and then he later sent me this wonderful or somebody sent me this wonderful set of leads for these silicone leads which alone are thirty or forty dollars but I thought it was interesting to watch the voltage from that little wall wart now in a plating plant they're using massive quantities of direct current it has to be direct current Okay, it's been one hour, so I'm removing the plated pieces. There's the steel and the copper, and I'll take it over to the, the sink and uh, thoroughly rinse it with hot water. Get all the chemical off of it. And be right back. I submit for your approval, Exhibit A. I wish I knew the photographic technique to, to uh, allow the light uh, to shine correctly on here, but really a nice job of nickel plating. My brother had a Remington Derringer over and under, I think it's 41 caliber, that was nickel plated, and I always did admire that. He also had a Colt 380 automatic semi-automatic nickel plated and I prefer the nickel plated pistols over the blue now you're seeing stainless steel and here's the steel now since this was successful I'm going to go ahead with the second part of the experiment and that is to nickel plate this. Now I have to clean it up thoroughly because this has that uh, bowing protective uh, let's see what bow shield on it given to me by Paul so that has to come off and I am assuming that a good thinner like the brake cleaner will do that so I'm going to clean that thoroughly and then I'm going to put it back on the lathe and just uh, lightly with number 500 
clean it a little bit more. Now I do know that this will not even begin to meet the specs so that it'll, it will be a good finish after it's nickel plated. They do a lot of buffing before they uh, plate. I have no intentions of buffing. I hate to buff. But buffing would bring it to a finish that uh, then when you nickel plate it would be absolutely beautiful. All of these uh, abrasive marks and tool marks will show up when this is done. But nevertheless, this will be nickel plated so then I will clean it with that uh, green detergent and I'll be back. Now that will take about 15 minutes. See you then. I'm back and this is still warm. I've scrub scrubbed it thoroughly with simple green and hot water. Now it's hanging by a piece of copper magnet wire and I took the varnish off so that it's not insulated and it's going to hang like that on that 832 screw and I must absolutely not touch it. But it's ready to go into the plating tank. Here we go. I do not want it to touch the bottom but it's I don't know if you can see it, but it is swinging freely in there, so I know it's not touching the bottom. And I will now plug it in. And that wall ward is warm from the last session. It still pulsates, but we're at about two and a quarter volts approximately. My only disappointment is I wanted to see bubbling and lots of it and there is none. Totally submerged and it is looking at my wall clock 1030 so at 1130 I'll be back and we'll have a look. See you then. Well, it's been 90 minutes. The wall wart is quite warm. Not that it matters. And the meter is reading under 2 volts. So let's see what we got. My mom always taught me to use newspapers. I unplugged the wall wart. Boy, is that nice and shiny. I like it. Where are my clippers? Shiny as a new nickel. Now the purpose of plating, of course, is to protect and beautify. That is awesome. Okay, I still got the chemical on it, the electrolyte, so I'm going to go over and wash it thoroughly and then we'll uh, come back and examine it. Okay, I washed it thoroughly with hot water, still warm. Before I examine it, I took the cathode with my micrometer and I measured it above the water line and below the water line and I could find really no measurable difference with with a standard micrometer so that kind of surprised me I thought that that would be reduced in thickness now looking at the center punch I also thought how thick is the the nickel plating by the way there was a nickel plate railroad you remember that And I thought, well, maybe the punch isn't going to fit in the hole in case there is plating in the hole. But again, I can't really tell whether it, uh, the plating went into the hole. But the punch fits fine. And I'll put that back together off camera. But the finish is absolutely beautiful. And my uh, main comment here is that just as I predicted, the scratches and the machine marks and the abrasive marks, if anything, are highlighted. 
rather than hidden. And I knew that would happen. This would have to be polished or ground or buffed in order for that uh, finish to be perfect. But yet it is still beautiful. Now my only worry is did I have it clean enough so it will not delaminate. And sometimes you see real old products, tools or whatever around your house and you've seen some uh, delamination. Boy is that shiny. I am really happy and thank you Kevin. And you're going to see this process in some of my other videos. One that's coming up on my tap wrenches where I'm going to do a comparison between uh, bluing the project and nickel plating. So there it is. My bell center punch which you saw me make in previous videos. Now nickel plated. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. A whole new world has just opened up to me. And I'm just very surprised that using a, a kit that is relatively inexpensive and did not require any major equipment other than what Kevin sent me. And there is the company should you want to uh, look at this. And I'm sure they have a website. Oh, I know they do because I went to it. So you check that out. Be sure and watch my almost 900 other videos which you can find by searching Mr. Pete 222 or Tubal Cane if you're new to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Tell your friends. Continue to watch. And this is Tubal Cane saying so long. I'll see you in my next video.